King Sigfred was king of Denmark from 1770 to 804. It is speculated that he was Sigurd Hiring, who had defeated Harald Wartooth in the Battle of Bravelir in 770, and for being the father of Ragnar Lothbrok. However, modern scholarship agrees that part of the genealogy of the early Viking kings of Denmark is a high medieval construction. King Sigfred is mentioned several times in the Frankish annals that are more reliable. The reign of King Sigfred was during the time of the Saxon Wars. He would get a front seat view of the war and the forced Christianization of the Saxon people. Hey! Yeah, you. Odin wants more followers. Hit like, subscribe and share this video with your friends on Twitter and Facebook. Now. In 772, the Frankish King Charlemagne was just finishing the annexation of East Frisia, the last independent Frisian lands, and went straight to war against the pagan Saxons. Or you could call it a crusade since this was not just a war of conquest. Charlemagne had already forced the Frisians to convert to Christianity, and now it was the Saxons' turn. The Saxons were composed of four tribes. The Westphalian tribe in the west, the Angrari tribe in the center, the Eastphalian tribe in the east, and the Nordalbingians in the north. Charlemagne's campaign led all the way to Weser River, and destroyed several major Saxon strongholds. Near Erisberg, Charlemagne ordered the destruction of the Irminsul sanctuary. Irminsul may have been a hollow tree trunk, presumably representing the pillar supporting the skies, similar to the Nordic tree Yggdrasil, and was a common belief among the Germanic people. The Westphalian tribes retaliated and attacked the church at Deventer. The church of Deventer was built in 768 by Lebeunus, an Anglo-Saxon missionary monk from England, also called the Apostle of the Frisians, who devoted his life to the Christian conversions of the Frisians and the Saxons. The Saxons was not interested and burnt the church down. According to Charlemagne, this was the cause for the attack on the Saxons. Either way, the Saxons had all the rights to resist. At the same time, the Angrari laid siege to the Frankish court at Fritzlar. The Anglo-Saxon missionary Saint Boniface, also called Apostle of the Germans, established a church and a monastery dedicated to Saint Peter in Fritzlar in 724. These two churches were the main missionary centers used to convert the Saxons to Christianity in the early stages. After negotiating with some Saxon nobles and obtaining hostages, Charlemagne turned his attention to his war against the Lombards in northern Italy. But Saxon free peasants led by Widukind continued to resist and raided Frankish lands in the Rhine region. Armed confrontations continued unabated for years. In 775, Charlemagne marched through Westphalia, conquering the fort of Sigiburg. He advanced through Angria, where he defeated the Saxons again. He continued his advance into Eastphalia, where he once again defeated them, and their leader Hesse converted to Christianity. He returned the same way he came leaving encampments at Erisberg and Sigeberg. All of Saxony, except for Nordalbinia in the north, was under his control. But the recalcitrant Saxons would not submit for long. In 776, a rebellion by Widukin destroyed Charlemagne's fortress at Erisberg. When Charlemagne heard about this, he returned very rapidly to Saxony and once again brought the Saxons to heel. In 777, he called a national diet at Paderborn to integrate Saxony fully into the Frankish kingdom. Many Saxons were forced to be baptized. Charlemagne issued a number of decrees designed to break the Saxon resistance and to inflict 
capital punishment on anyone observing heathen practices or disrespecting the king's peace used missionaries mainly anglo-saxons from england to indoctrinate their minds with the nonsense of christianity charlemagne's severe and uncompromising position earned him the title butcher of saxons when the local nobility came to appear before charlemagne's court to submit Widukin did not show up King Sigfred of Denmark is first mentioned in the Frankish annals in 777. When the Saxon chief Widukin, leader of the resistance against Charlemagne, fled Saxony in the face of the Frankish onslaught, Widukin found refuge with Sigfred, a fellow pagan. But the Frankish annals do not say in detail what kind of assistance the Danish king may have provided. Much later, German chronicles, keen to elaborate the family tree of Widukin, alleged that he was married to Siegfried's sister or daughter Geva. The value of this information is, however, debatable. In 778, the Westphalians again rebelled and invaded the Frankish Rhineland and subsequently fought a running battle against Charlemagne's forces and their local allies while the king was busy in Spain. In the summer of 779, Charlemagne again went into Saxony and conquered Eastphalia, Angria and Westphalia. At a diet near Lipspringe, he divided the land into missionary districts and Frankish courtships. In 780, Charlemagne himself assisted in several mass baptisms. He then returned to Italy and there was no Saxon revolts. From 780 to 782, the land had peace. In the summer of 782, Charlemagne led his forces to the sources of the Lippe River, staying there for some time, reinforced his strict code of law on religious issues, a ban on paganism. During that time, he received envoys from King Siegfried of Denmark although the details of the negotiations are not disclosed. The same year, in autumn, while Charlemagne was campaigning against the Sorbs, Widukin returned from Denmark and goaded the Saxons into rebellion. Widukin annihilated a detachment of Frankish forces, led by envoys of Charlemagne at the Battle of Suntel. The result was a victory for the Saxons resulting in the deaths of four counts, 20 other so-called noblemen, and two of the three leaders of the Frankish detachment. The uprising expanded to Frisian lands that had been pacified earlier. This led to a mass return to paganism by the population in both Saxony and Frisia. Of course, because that is the European man's natural biological imperative. The Saxons invaded the area of the Schotti, a Germanic tribe already converted by Saint Boniface and firmly in Charlemagne's empire. Marauders burned churches and the priests had to flee south to escape certain death. When Charlemagne heard of the rebellion, he returned to Saxony and he had 4,500 Saxons executed at Verden, known as the Massacre of Verden. This event is attested in contemporary Frankish sources, including the Royal Frankish Annals. This furiated the Saxons and led to three years of constant warfare. The Frisians aided Widukin against the Franks in 784 by sending him an army. It did help a little, but gradually the Franks gained the upper hand. In 785 in Bardengau, Widukin agreed to surrender in return for a guarantee that no bodily harm would be done to him. Widukin was then forced to be baptized. The Frisian uprising was severely repressed by the Franks. Charlemagne had again control over Frisia and most of Saxony except for Nordalbinia in the north. In 792, the Westphalians rose up again, in response to forcible recruitment for Charlemagne's wars against the Avars, 
The Frisians, the Nordalbingians and Isfalians joined them in 793, but the insurrection did not catch on as previous ones, and was completely put down by 794. Meanwhile, the Nordalbingian tribes in the north remained reluctant to be Christianized. For several years there is no mention of the Danish king Siegfried. But in 798 Charlemagne sent one of his trustees on a diplomatic mission to King Siegfried. On his return he was slain by the rebellious Saxons living northeast of the river Elbe. In response Charlemagne invaded Nudalbingia from the south and Prince Drusco of the Orbitrites from the east in 798. In the Battle of Bornhoved, the Nordalbingian Saxons was utterly defeated. Charlemagne had many Saxons massacred and 10,000 families was deported to other areas of the Carolingian Empire. The area became sparsely populated and the land north of the river Elbe was awarded to the Orbitrites in 804 by Charlemagne as a reward for their contribution to victory, while the land south of the river were incorporated into the Frankish Empire. In the year 799, Viking ships appeared off the coast of the tidal island Nuir Moutier in the Bay of Biscay. We don't know if they were Danes or Norwegians. It could be early Danish raids in support of the Saxons or a warning to Charlemagne not to come closer to the Danish border. But it is far to sail to give a message. There's a lot of coastline they could have hit that is much closer to home that we know they would do later. Or it could be the Norwegians that was already active in Ireland that was exploring or had sailed off course. I leave you to be the judge. When the Vikings landed on the island, they discovered that the island had an indoctrination center. The monastery was founded by Saint Philbert of Jumiege in 674. The Vikings did the only righteous thing they could do. Kill monks, take gold and silver from the greedy priests, and burned the goddamn church down for spreading lies about nature. This is the first recorded Viking raid on the Frankish Empire, if you exclude the Saxons. The last insurrection of the Saxons occurred in Angria in 804, more than 30 years after Charlemagne's first campaign against them. But it was soon crushed by Charlemagne. Einhard, Charlemagne's biographer, had this to say on the closing of the conflict. The war that had lasted so many years was at length ended by their acceding to the terms offered by the king, which were renunciation of their national, religious customs and worship of devils, acceptance of the sacraments of the Christian faith and religion and union with the Franks to form one people. So, to all you Christians out there saying that Christianization was peaceful and that the Viking Age had nothing to do with Christianity, listen to what the so-called intellectuals at that time had to say about the Danish king. The Lombard literati Peter of Pisa and Paulus Diaconis convey a very negative image of King Siegfried of Denmark. Peter wrote to Paulus that Charlemagne had let Siegfried choose between being fettered, imprisoned or to convert. In reply, Paulus castigated the Danish king as a wild beast who ruled over other wild animals, an uncouth pagan who would nevertheless be unable to stand up against the mighty Frankish ruler, if he dared molest Peter and his entourage and refuse Christianization. He would quickly be led before Charlemagne's throne in fetters, abandoned by Odin and Thor. Yeah, what a charming view they had on people living according to nature and their natural biological imperative. 
I guess we now know what that diplomatic mission was all about. And that the pagans in Scandinavia had all the reasons to be worried and indeed very angry and should prepare for preemptive attack. King Siegfried died in 804, the same year the last Saxon rebellion was subdued and the Frankish annexation of Saxony was complete. King Siegfried was succeeded by King Gudfred, whom the next video will be based on. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel, hit like and share it with your friends. You can support me through Patreon if you like. The link is in the description. Thank you for watching.